Hi, I'm Luminous Star and welcome to the channel. Everyone who is a current subscriber, mwah, thank you guys and gals so much for your subscription and thank you for supporting this channel, Luminous Star. This way, our star family will continue to grow and our community is growing every day. So of course, <laughs> I'm very happy about this. Everyone who is joining us for the first time, welcome to Luminous Star. And why don't you join the star family by selecting the subscription button below. Also below, you will find the description box, which has the details to today's video. All right, today's video, the daughters of narcissistic mothers face insurmountable dilemmas. First point, daughters of narcissistic mothers face dilemmas, meaning she has more than likely lost count of the times that she has faced a rock and a hard place. It is within her dysfunctional family that she has been taught how to sacrifice herself repeatedly for those who do not care to love, respect, like, defend, or even know her. All right, so a lot of daughters who have a narcissistic mom, or actually even a cluster B personality mom, um, you know, this is something that she lives with every day. She is faced with choices that she must make, often pressured by her own dysfunctional family to make, which places her between a rock and a hard place. This is something that daughters of narcissistic mothers know all too well. The other thing I wanna say about this is that a lot of us have faced challenges in life, but when it comes to our moms who either have a cluster personality or a narcissistic personality, those challenges actually fade in comparison. Well, some of the challenges do, such as, making choices whether or not to show up for the family gatherings, such as cookouts, or having a family reunion, and even the family-oriented holidays. A lot of daughters of narcissistic mothers, this is quite the dilemma. And some of you may be asking, why is that? That's her family. Well, see, it's not so simple. From the outside looking in, it looks pretty natural, it looks pretty normal, and yes, it does look simple. However, as I stated, it's just not that simple. There's a lot of scrutiny that more than likely awaits her if she goes to any of the family-oriented gatherings or any of the family-oriented functions, whereas everybody gets together and maybe they'll go on vacation. However, when it comes to the daughter of a narcissistic mother, she has a dilemma because she doesn't want to face the scrutiny that is not justified. So if she decides to arrive, then again, she's faced with the looks. She's faced with those family members who would like to cast shade because they know certain things about her or they think they do because the narcissistic mom has given them an earful. And unfortunately, certain family members may feel a little bit more closer or they may relate more so to the narcissistic mom rather than the daughter of a narcissistic mom. We see this all too often, especially those of us who have experienced it. So when it comes to dilemmas, the daughters of narcissistic mothers, they know quite a lot about dilemmas. They're often placed between a rock and a hard place when it comes to their own dysfunctional families. So she has been taught to sacrifice herself repeatedly for those who do not care for her. They don't even like her. They will not defend her under any circumstances. Matter of fact, they like to make sure that they set her up for failure. They benefit all too well from her being sacrificed and being demeaned in her own family. Just think about it the aunt or the uncle who may suspect something, but yet they don't say anything because after all, the narcissistic mom. sister. All right, so even aunts and uncles sometimes, they may suspect certain things, they may see or hear something. And throughout the years, they choose not to speak of it. They choose to pretend like they don't know anything. Sometimes it's older cousins. So when we're children, an older cousin, such as an adult cousin, may choose to turn 
and walk away from the situation or choose to turn away. And again, as I stated, with the aunts and uncles, they follow suit and they don't say anything. They keep the deep, dark, dirty secret. Sometimes it's the grandparents. They may see the daughter of a narcissistic mother who is being berated for something she didn't do. She's being scolded for something she did not do. She's being punished for things that she did not do. Yet she's being repeatedly falsely accused of certain acts that she have never thought of doing. But this is something that a lot of daughters of narcissistic mothers know all too well. And it starts from when they are children. They are taught to sacrifice themselves. So by the time the daughter grows into an adult, that particular programming from her subconscious mind is running and is very active. Daughters of narcissistic mothers had to learn early in life that she will not ever have an honorable place at her dysfunctional family table. Yet she is expected to carry and pass on the dysfunctional family legacy under the watchful eyes of her narcissistic mother. This is one that many daughters of narcissistic mothers know all too well and that is they are expected to pass on not only carry but to pass on the dysfunctional family legacy under the watchful eyes of their narcissistic mother okay now this right here is sad within itself because it is almost as if the narcissistic mother is teaching her daughter that she is to be invisible she is not to be seen nor is she to be heard unless it's necessary unless it benefits others she is always last on the list yet the narcissistic mother will put on a spectacle and she will put on such a big show that her daughter is her pride and joy the narcissistic mother teaches her daughter even while she's carrying her in the womb how to be invisible how not to be seen or heard unless she is to sacrifice herself therefore benefiting others who have a predatory nature and who don't care to love respect like or even know these are messages that run very deeply within the daughters of narcissistic mothers actually it's not very surprising that by the time the daughters of narcissistic mothers become adults able to have her own family able to have her own marriage her own spouse her own children and maybe even establish some sort of livelihood for herself these messages again are deeply ingrained in her and they will be carried out before she wakes up she was not ever obligated to fulfill any of these expectations for one they're very unrealistic number two she's been lied to she's been emotionally manipulated to parent her parents specifically her narcissistic mother so she really didn't get a chance to be a child her narcissistic mother expects her to do so much more than really any human being is actually possibly able to do and that is to remain invisible to sacrifice themselves suffer in silence and be happy about it while carrying on the dysfunctional family legacy it is within the dark shadows of their dysfunctional family that narcissistic mothers speak curses deep generational family dirty secrets and sabotage against their daughters while displaying out in the world a false self-image of a martyr it is within the dark shadows of her dysfunctional family that daughters of narcissistic mothers must rise up out of so a lot of daughters of narcissistic mothers remain within the sunken place for a very long time and where does it all start right inside of their own dysfunctional families there are dark shadows within dysfunctional families 
However, when it comes to daughters of the narcissistic moms, there's a special place only for her. It is here that a lot of daughters of narcissistic mothers must find the inner strength and love to rise up out of that deep sunken place called the dark shadows of her dysfunctional family. See, this sounds grimmer and more deeper than your own grave or tomb. In a sense, it is like the grave. It is like the tomb buried beneath the shadows in a deep sunken place where no one can hear your screams, your cries, your pleas for help. As daughters of narcissistic moms try to figure out all on her own what is going on, what's happening to her, and why. Some family members, unfortunately, they conspire to make sure she never gets the answer to her questions. She never finds out what's really going on. Unfortunately, when it comes to daughters of narcissistic mothers, it is no surprise to find that there are family members who will conspire with the narcissistic mom to keep the daughter within the deep, dark, sunken place. Because this is where they feel she belongs. This is where they think she deserves to be because she is not to be seen or heard unless it conveniences them. And I just wanna say, if you are a daughter right now who's watching this of a narcissistic mom, ask yourself this question. How can you exist the way that your narcissistic mom wishes you to when your narcissistic mom is not even being truthful about who she is? If you are a daughter of a narcissistic mother, just know that you are not alone. This is something that a lot of daughters face who have narcissistic moms. They're stuck between a rock and a hard place when it comes to the family-oriented holidays. She may even wonder how to conduct herself as she sits silently and watch her mother continue to be deceptive. Sometimes the narcissistic mom is very aware and even sets up her daughter being abused by other family members. I know this sounds horrible, but a lot of you who are watching this, you either know this experience from your own experience or you know someone this has occurred. Tool number one, it is not your fault that your narcissistic mother did not always make the best choices or the right choices concerning you. Okay, so a lot of daughters, a lot of us daughters who have a narcissistic mom or a mother who has a cousin personality, we know a lot about this one. We still have memories. You know, there are some who still have memories of mom not being there, not understanding why mom chose what she chose, who she chose instead of choosing us. That still is burning within our hearts. And some of us are fully grown women now. Okay, some of you watching this video may be minors, you may be teenagers. However, this is something that a lot of us have in common, and that is scratching our heads and looking at our moms and wondering why did she make certain choices that she made concerning us? And why were some of those choices very poor? Whereas it's obviously not the right choices. But to our mothers, she thought that that was the right choice. Okay, so this is one that varies from situation to situation, from person to person. A lot of moms who have a custody personality and a narcissistic personality are loyal to the false self image. Unfortunately, a lot of daughters end up sacrificed as the narcissistic mom actively remains loyal to her false self image. So the daughters get lost all in the shabakal, daughters get left behind, maybe not physically, but certainly emotionally, if not psychologically and spiritually. They get left behind by their narcissistic moms. And the narcissistic moms, they continue to deny this. They continue throughout the years to not wanna deal with it. So the daughters of narcissistic mothers, what do we do? We have to seek out answers elsewhere because our mothers have taught us since our childhood that she's not going to talk to us about certain things. This is something that we cannot force our moms to do. Unfortunately, we are left to other ways of trying to figure out 
what has happened to us and how do we deal with and process how we experienced our mothers since our childhoods. Some of us still grapple with this. Some of us still have the nightmares about our own mothers. And I do mean literally, still have the nightmares. Some of us are still seemingly plagued with memories that don't seem to go away no matter how hard we try. Just know this, it is not your fault. What has transpired is not your fault. You cannot and you could not have made your mom do anything. See, we can't control anyone else. So when you were a little girl, you absolutely couldn't control your mom. So when daughters of narcissistic mothers are small children, this is when they're most vulnerable to narcissistic abuse, to all types of the shenanigans that the mom may pull. Unfortunately, it is not until we are adults that we begin to process what has transpired between ourselves and our mothers. Tool number two, love, honor, and place respect upon your family lineage by denouncing senseless self-sacrificing for a dysfunctional family that you have no place in. Surely your purpose in life is not to be narcissistic supply for your mother. Your family will never expect this of you if you are loved, respected, and cared for. So this is partly what a family is all about. That is loving, caring, respecting for one another, regardless of your differences. This means family members ought to be able to come together and resolve issues and to smooth out differences. This is what family is about. It's about growing together regardless of your differences. Unfortunately, a lot of dysfunctional families, they have this rule or this policy that everyone is to be cookie cutter. No one can be different. No one can be too different, okay? No one can be too unique. Ironically, when it comes to nature, human nature in particular, uniqueness is key in order to survive. If everyone was cookie cutter, no one would be here on the planet. Okay, let that one sink in for a minute. When it comes to being unique, it is a must for human survival. In order for humanity to thrive forward, we must have uniqueness. Case in point, male and female. There are some differences that are unique between these two genders. Yes, they are both genders, but again, there are some aspects of those two genders which are unique. If it wasn't for that, a lot of us wouldn't be here. <laughs> okay? So that's just one way to look at it. A lot of dysfunctional families are cookie cutter. And it is absolutely causing some real issues. Especially when it comes to the daughter of a narcissistic mother. Because where is her place in the dysfunctional family? As I stated before, usually it's within the dark shadows of the dysfunctional family where she is well hidden and usually silenced. Next tool, take some time out to find out who you are and what your life means to you as you decide how you'd like to experience it all. The best revenge is going no contact while loving yourself enough to love others who appreciate you. So this is not to suggest to go no contact without, of course, planning and strategizing it. What it really suggests is that you're able to love yourself again. Find out how to love yourself again so you can connect to other people in a more balanced and harmonious and healthy way. And of course, you all that's watching and you're listening to this, I wish you the best of luck with this. Okay, you may not need luck. 
However, what you will need is inner strength. You will need some guidance from people who would love and appreciate you on how to do this. There is no one man show. There is no one woman show. That's an illusion. Let's move forward. I want to go ahead, everyone who is watching and listening today, if you are a daughter of a narcissistic mom, my heart goes out to you. I know a little bit about having some difficulty in relating to moms. Now, when I was growing up, of course, there were some bumps in the road. There were some detours. There were some slippery slopes when it came to my relationship with my mom. However, I choose today to cherish the great and wonderful memories of my mom, regardless of the differences. Have there been a lot of differences? Absolutely. Some of those memories are still with me today. But I use it as a reference guide, not to hurt myself or my mother or anyone else. So I really want to make it clear that regardless of the difficulties you may have had with your mom, who may either have a narcissistic personality or a cosmic personality, just know this. You're here today, so you can continue to carry on a legacy, but it doesn't have to be a legacy steeped in dysfunction. You can put some respect on your family lineage by simply denouncing dysfunctional relationships, beginning with your family. There are certain family members I certainly hope that you're able to connect to today, but for some of you, I know that's not the case. Again, remember, you do count as part of your family, even though your narcissistic mom may have stated otherwise. She may still be protesting that today. She may still be trying to poison your life in some way, shape, or form. My heart goes out to you. I just want to remind you that you are here today. You can write the epilogue to your story. You can simply state, I am here. I am alive. So my story, as of right now, changes. And you can make some decisions about how that's going to look for you and how that's going to unfold for you and how you would carry that out. Think about it this way. Any family who really loves you and cares for you, they're going to be sincerely happy with your being happy. Think about that for a minute. What family will continue to cast shade? What family will continue to talk smack? What family will continue to speak curses upon you and your life when things are a lot better for you now? After you have gone through the ordeal of being narcissistically abused at the hands of your mother, what family member, ask yourself, what family member would truly not be happy for you if you have been able to thrive past that. You have to let go. Easier said than done. This is one that I know about a lot. Letting go. I began to see back in 2010 that there were certain people, places, and things that I needed to change. Not for anyone else, but for myself. So when 2011 came around, I began to let certain things go. I started to see that there were certain people that I had to say goodbye to. Did it hurt? You bet it did. <laughs> yeah. At first I felt guilty about it. But then I just knew in my heart this was something I had to do. So when 2012 came around, yeah, it was more expedient for me to let people go. I began to do this at a more quicker pace. I began to do this with less guilt. I began to let go more effectively. Even though I felt and thought what I did, I was still able to place one foot in front of the other and breathe and be grateful and state, my life has purpose and I am here and I write the epilogue to my story. 
So letting go is very powerful. It's very important, especially us daughters of narcissistic moms or mothers who have a custody personality. Because some of us are still plagued seemingly by a lot of negative and toxic memories of being harmed by our own mothers in some way, shape, or form. In a lot of our cases, our moms did not mean to do it, yet she meant to do it. What do I mean by that? If your mom has a custody personality, if she has a narcissistic personality, she has a false self-image that she will stop at nothing to uphold. Her false self-image may be that of a martyr. Her false self-image may be that of a woman who lives within her community who is a great mom and an impeccable wife. That's an image that she will stop at nothing to uphold, even if that means her own daughter is emotionally, spiritually, and psychologically sacrificed in the process. Now, for some of you, that may sound very harsh, but some of you know a lot about this because some of us still remain within the sunken place. We still remain, when it comes to our dysfunctional families, where are we? Where are we? Certainly we don't have an honorable place at the table of our dysfunctional families. No, because we've been silenced by narcissistic abuse for quite some time. So when it comes to our own dysfunctional families, where are we? Within the shadows of the dysfunctional family, within the deep, dark, sunken place where we are invisible and have no voice. If you're listening and watching today, my heart goes out to you and I wish you the absolute very best love possible in order to continue to thrive forward past narcissistic abuse. Sometimes you do have to move on that means leaving certain loved ones behind, saying goodbye. And how do you do that? One step at a time. One step at a time. You pace yourself. You embrace yourself without apology. Defend and honor your life without apology. It is no accident that you are alive Certain others in your family may have stated to the contrary. They may look at you as if you are a mistake. But you know otherwise. You know better, don't you? You're here. You're breathing. Your heart is beating. You can find your voice, your personal power, and you can take your life up again. Come up out the sunken place. You can do it. You have this. You are somebody's daughter. That has honor. That in and of itself has honor. You have to find the strength to thrive forward. This means finding the good and the goodbye and be willing to look up and find the silver lining in the cloud. Thrive forward. I'm Luminous Star. I want to thank everybody for joining me today or tonight. Stay tuned for more videos and stay tuned for more vlogs. Wow, I certainly hope everyone has enjoyed that video and thank you again, my stars especially, for joining me today or tonight. And wherever you may be right now, I wish you the very best love possible. A friendly reminder, every Sunday and every Thursday, there are new videos that are coming out. However, all of you who have just joined the Star Family, welcome to the Luminous Star Family, and don't forget to select the notification bell. So that way, every Sunday, every Thursday, you'll be the first to know about those new videos coming out. I'm Luminous Star again. Thank you everyone for joining me today or tonight. 
stay tuned for more vlogs and stay tuned for more videos. Incubator of life. Through our lines.